Welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. So today I thought I would do my five top slow cooker recipes. I am someone who relies heavily on my slow cooker, but it's not just for winter. I have like pure summer favorites that I make all in my slow cooker throughout the spring and summer seasons, which I really wanted to share with you guys today. Slow cookers are for summer, not just for Christmas. These are all really affordable, quick, easy and healthy recipes that I go to throughout the summer season. All the ingredients and also the methods will all be written out very clearly on my website, which I've linked down below for you in case you need to refer back to any ingredient list. I hope you're excited. If you are, give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you share this with a friend who's also looking for some healthy and affordable dinners to eat throughout the summer. They're all family friendly, by the way, and there's a mixture of vegetarian, vegan, and non-vegetarian, vegan recipes here. Anyway, <laughs> and let's go. Okay, recipe number one is my Herbie Mushroom Tagliatelle Pasta. This is actually a favourite of Lawrence's. He loves this and so will you if you make it. So first of all, you need some onions. You need two packs of mushrooms, chestnut mushrooms. You need three to four cloves of garlic, a whole lemon, preferably an organic lemon as you will be cooking with the skin, some salt, some mixed herbs, or if you haven't got that, just some basil, oregano. And the first thing I do is chop up the onions, so I dice them all together and they go in the slow cooker first. I do actually cook this on high for about three hours. Then I wash the chestnut mushrooms. Now I know it seems excessive to use two punnets of these but they do shrink a lot when they are being cooked. So I dice them up and throw them in the slow cooker. Then I half the lemon and pour out as much juice as I can and then just throw the lemon in because you want it to be nice and lemony and garlicky. Oh, it's just so delicious. Also with the garlic, I actually just crush this a bit. I don't chop this up just because you want a subtle garlic flavor. You don't want a bitter garlic flavor. A good pinch of salt you can also add pepper in if you want and about a teaspoon or maybe even a tablespoon of herbs the next thing I do is add some hot water about half a pint or half a jug maybe and some vegetable stock so I do actually make my own vegetable stock and I freeze it in ice cubes so I've actually gone for that but if you don't have that you can just use like one of those normal vegetable stocks and throw that in and I add lots of pepper, give it a good stir. So it's quite basic, but honestly, it's the tastiest pasta dish you will have this summer. Throw in a good knob of butter. It can be vegan butter if you want to keep this whole dish vegan. Keep the lid on and you will actually cook for two to three hours on high. So after an hour, it looks like this. And I do add some corn flour because I like the sauce to be thick. You can have it as a runny sauce if you like. Corn flour is really good for thickening up sauces and there being no lumps. And oh my gosh, it's so delicious. Um, and when it's ready to serve, after about three hours, get my tagliate tagliatelle ready. Add some olive oil and some chili flakes to the pasta. We actually cook the pasta al dente, so it has a lovely bite to it. Serve a good heap of the mushrooms with some chili peppers if you like and a leaf of basil and wow this stuff is great. Lawrence actually is obsessed with this and he asks me to make it all the time so it's a real winner. It's also really super duper healthy and so perfect for an easy summer meal. Hopefully we can have friends and family over soon and this could be a great one to cook for friends and family because it's really quick and affordable. Next up, I'm going to show you my barbecue pulled chicken burritos. These are so popular. So essentially we're going to home make a barbecue sauce. So we just need some ketchup. We need something sweet. You can go for sugar, but I actually tend to go for honey. I'm just showing you sugar. Some five spice soy sauce or normal soy sauce, a Worcester sauce, some apple cider vinegar, sesame seed oil or normal olive oil, and two large carrots or three medium carrots. And I actually do three 
onions. So I'm going to dice my onions up now. They're always the first thing I put into my slow cooker. I do actually cook this on high for the first hour and a half and then on low for a further two to three hours. You're also going to need two medium sized chicken breasts. Um, I didn't show them for some reason. But you grate your carrots down and throw them in with the onions and your oil. So carrots will just add a lot of thickness to the dish. It will also make the chicken carry so this is actually enough for four adults because the carrots thicken the sauce that much that it you know you don't need too much chicken really throw in a load of ketchup a load of the soy sauce a big dollop of honey and a big glug of apple cider vinegar and then put your chicken breasts in stir it all together and essentially you're just going to leave this alone all day the chicken becomes ridiculously tender and um, which I'll show you after it's done but I do open it about an hour after cooking to give it another really good stir and I will throw some smoked paprika in some garlic granules and some chili flakes um i've gone for chipotle chili flakes today if you want something a little less spicy you can go for ancho chili flakes they're great in this dish and the last thing i do about half an hour before serving i open the lid and i add a load of sesame seeds And just pull apart the chicken with a knife and fork and it will fall apart. It's so tender, it's so delicious. And how we serve it is in a burrito format. So we get a wrap of some kind, we get some plain rice or some wholemeal rice, cook that up, fry it a little bit with some cheese. You can serve it with some avocado on the side and wrap it all up together and it is absolutely delicious like this is such a good meal and we also serve it all the time with our homemade coleslaw i always add some rocket to the side of my plate also but yeah if you make this let me know because a few of you have and you've said how much you loved it. Okay, the next thing we are going to be cooking is my healthy veggie chilli. So this uh, makes quite a big portion, so you need a bag of the corn mince. You also need some onions, I love onions, and two sticks of celery, about four cloves of garlic, and if you can find them, a tin of spicy red kidney beans in Aldi, or normal kidney beans will do. Some carrots and some marmite, because we won't be adding beef stock to this as we're trying to keep it vegetarian. So throw in your corn with some olive oil or oil of your choice. Dice up your onions and throw them in next. Chop up your celery and throw your celery in. Celery really adds a lot of liquid to this dish, so you don't really need to add too much liquid, which is great. Grate your carrots up also and throw them in. They will thicken it up. They'll also naturally sweeten the dish. To be honest, after, you, after you've thrown your kidney beans in, that will give it a really nice kind of spice to the chilli, but I do add a couple of bits later. Add a teaspoon of Marmite and some smoked paprika, which is actually optional, but I like chilli to have a really nice smoky flavour. And then I just chop my garlic up as I like it quite garlicky, chop it up in ch large chunks and throw it in. After about 20 minutes of the lid being on, some of the liquid from the celery should be coming out, so it's a good time to store to stir then. I also add another big glug of Worcester sauce, this gives it a really nice bite. Now I serve mine with homemade tortilla chips so I use leftover tortilla wraps <laughs> and I cut them up in triangles, put them on a baking tray, put a bit of olive oil on and some garlic powder and smoked paprika and put them in the oven for about 10 minutes and you just have some homemade tortilla chips and they're really delicious and great to serve with this veggie curry.
so this does actually make quite a lot and I do actually freeze some every time I make this so my freezer is always full of like really healthy nutritious food I also serve it with some chili flakes on top just to give it an extra bite and a bit of cheese to melt on top and yeah this is just one of my favorite vegetarian dishes it's absolutely delicious so easy it takes three hours uh, 10 minutes of throwing everything in the pot at the start of the day and it's done Okay, next is my super duper easy sweet and sour chicken. Out of everything I make in the slow cooker, this is probably Lawrence's favorite. Okay, you're going to need a tin of pineapple chunks in juice, two chicken breasts, some peppers, I've gone for yellow and green today. You also need some apple cider vinegar, some garlic powder or garlic granules, honey, some apple cider vinegar, you need ketchup. First thing I do as always is dice up my onions and throw them in. I use three onions for this dish. Throw in about a tablespoon of garlic granules and a big chunk of tomato sauce. Then you put in about two to three tablespoons of pineapple juice followed by about two thirds of the actual pineapple chunks. Big glug of apple cider vinegar, a big glug of dark soy sauce, and a large tablespoon of honey. Then you slice up your peppers and throw those in. You also dice up and throw in two chicken breasts and after about half an hour when the juices start flowing you can give it a really good stir just so everything is coated and then I will leave the lid on for about three hours and I'll keep this on high or if you're doing it on low you have to cook it for about five hours it's so ridiculously easy and so tasty that is actually all you do we serve it with steamed white rice and chili flakes just to give it a little bit of spice as we like spice in our life and yeah serve up so this will serve about three to four people and um, it's just such honestly you have to try this it is so delicious one of the easiest things and um, yeah we really enjoy this Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you is my slow cooker chickpea curry. So this is a great one for freezing. Um, the first thing you need is hot chili powder. You need some ground cumin, cardamom pods. You also need some ground coriander, ground turmeric, and some ghee. You don't actually have to use ghee, you can use any other fat. So you can actually use olive oil if you want to keep it vegan. A tin of chickpeas, some lemon, a whole lemon, preferably organic, three small onions, and a whole bag of baby spinach, a large bag. So as usual, the first thing I do is dice up my onions and throw them in. After I've added the onions, I will add the ghee. So if you are using ghee, you want about a large tablespoon of ghee. Wash your chickpeas from the liquid they come in in the tin. Wash them thoroughly with water and throw those in next. So you want the whole tin. And then of all the spices I'm using today, I just add exactly one teaspoon each. So one heaped teaspoon of all of the spices. The cardamom pods, I actually just add two of those because they're quite perfumey, so you don't want to overdo it with them. Again, chop the lemon in half, give it a really good squeeze, and then just throw the lemons in there just to make it extra citrusy, and it's just a really summery, gorgeous flavor. I also add a tin of tomatoes so you need a tin of cho chopped tomatoes I'll add a tin of that and then I throw in the entire bag of spinach this is already washed and ready to eat the spinach honestly it looks excessive but spinach will whittle down to barely anything and it's so good for you you can never have too much spinach
So after about half an hour, the water from the spinach will start to appear. So it's a great time to stir it through. And then you can put the lid on and leave for two hours. And honestly, that's all you do and it will be ready to serve. It's such a great meal to freeze, but it's also a really healthy, lovely curry to have in the summer. It's just so good for you and um, nutritious. And yeah, we really enjoy this in this house. This I mainly actually have for lunches just because it's so easy to freeze, but yeah. Those are my five top recipes. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and you found it useful. If you do make any of the recipes, then please let me know over on Instagram. Don't forget to tag me. Also, don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And all of the recipes and ingredients are on my website linked below. And yeah, I will see you again very, very soon. And I love you very, very much. Bye.